pleasant good morning and warm welcome to all of you to the media briefing of the 68th Annual Health Research Conference hosted by the Caribbean Public Health Agency and the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. I wish to recognize the Honorable Moses Jabatis, the Minister of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, Dr. Joyce and John, Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, Ms. Jenny Daniel, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, Dr. Michelle Francois, the National Epidemiologist of the Ministry of Health, Mrs. Lloyd Felix, the Acting Director of the Substance Abuse Secretariat, other officials of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, the conference planning team between CAFA, the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Tourism, Events, Planning, the staff from the Caribbean Public Health Agency, and the members of the media. Warm welcome to all of you. Our feature speakers this morning include Dr. Joyce and John, the Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, and Honorable Moses Jabatis, the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. This year's theme, Violence in the Caribbean, a Public Health Crisis, is timely and relevant as St. Lucia and the region note increases in crime and violence. According to the World Health Organization, public health refers to all organized measures, whether public or private, to prevent disease, promote health. The Centers for Disease Control further defines public health as the science of protecting and improving the health of people and their communities. This work is achieved by promoting healthy lifestyles, researching disease and injury prevention, detecting, preventing, and responding to infectious diseases. This conference, which will be held in St. Lucia this year, provides an excellent opportunity for all health-related practitioners to actively participate. It will also strengthen the research agenda, which is a priority of the Ministry of Health. It will also allow innovative thinking and promote best practices. Further, the conference will seek to address the public health concern and provide scientific evidence, epidemiological data that will demonstrate the nature of crime and violence and how health systems can help to prevent and respond to violence as part of the multi-sectoral response which is needed. The conference is the longest running health research conference in the English speaking Caribbean. It aims to provide support and facilitate the strengthening of two key attributes of health research systems in the region. Developing and sustaining the capacity and knowledge production, translation and utilization. I would like to welcome the first feature speaker Dr. Joyce St. John, the Executive Director of CAFA. Dr. St. John became the first Barbadian Chief Medical Officer of Barbados in 2005. She also represented Barbados on the Executive Board of the World Health Organization and then became the first Caribbean person to chair the Executive Board from the year 2012 to 2013. Dr. St. John became the Assistant Director General of the World Health Organization Headquarters, where she held the portfolio of climate and other determinants of health and successfully completed the first phase of the Climate Change and Health Small Islands Developing States Initiative. In July of 2019, Dr. St. John became the Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency. CAFA led the CARICOM Regional Public Health Response to the over 400 speaking engagements about COVID-19. She, she, sorry, she became the... CAFA led the CARICOM Regional Public Health Response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and Dr. St. John's leadership has seen her have over 400 speaking engagements about COVID-19. CAFA is currently one of the partners in a project entitled Pathway to Policy, 
integrating security and public health responses to firearms trafficking and violence in the Caribbean. Please join me in welcoming Dr. St. John to the podium. Thank you, Madam Master of Ceremonies, Dr. Sharon Belmar George. I would like to say all protocols observe, but I can't do it, so bear with me. Honorable Moses Jean Baptiste, Minister of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. I understand that Dr. Didicus Jules, Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, may be joining us online, Ms. Jenny Daniel. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. Ms. Sorry, let me go down. Um, Yvette St. Lucia, Julie Bonnet, National Youth Council Acting Coordinator, Substance Abuse Secretariat, Natasha Lloyd Felix. Other officials, Ministry of Health, Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of External Affairs, members of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association and the Nurses Association, conference planning teams comprising Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs and CARFA, CARFA staff, members of the media, good morning. It is a pleasure to be here in St. Lucia especially to announce some exciting news. This simply beautiful island, known for its iconic pitons, a walk-in volcano, and friendly people, will be hosting the 68th Annual Health Research Conference organized by the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA. This year's theme, Violence in the Caribbean, a Public Health Crisis, addresses a scourge inflicting harm across our entire region. Crime and violence threaten public safety, economies, and mental well-being, and is no friend to anyone. It affects all levels of society. From the 25th to the 27th of April this year, in partnership with the St. Lucian Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, CARFA will welcome researchers, medical and public health officials and professionals and those from related fields to participate. We encourage lively discussions and exploration of research, analyses, and proposed solutions to address this public health crisis. Every year without fail, except 2020 because of COVID-19, CARFA delivers more than just a conference. Pre-conference meetings will focus on public health governance of the region and the CARICOM Chief Medical Officers meeting. The much anticipated and prestigious awards banquet will acknowledge Caribbean scholars who have made significant contributions to regional public health advancements. Sincere gratitude goes to the St. Lucian government for hosting this conference during a time when combating crime and violence is a priority across the Caribbean. Beyond the conference itself, attendees will have the opportunity to experience St. Lucia's scenic landscape rich cultural heritage, a captivating blend of French influence from language and food to cultural practices. Finally, a heartfelt thank you to the media for your vital role in disseminating this information and attracting a diverse and engaged audience. CARFA looks forward to a successful conference in beautiful St. Lucia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. St. John. And as she indicated, combating crime and violence is a priority in St. Lucia and also in the region. So apart from all of the benefits which was highlighted 
for the conference, she also highlighted that it can also be seen as a vacation time because of the beauty that our island um, possesses. And as we know, the importance of the public health approach, having CAFA come down to discuss crime and violence, we're aware that the public health approach is concerned with health, well-being, and safety of the entire population. It's evidence-based, data-driven, and ensures collaboration across partners, stakeholders. It's multi-sectoral as well and multi-agency. So utilizing this approach, which CAFA is very well known for, and using our data with our various stakeholders, we'll definitely get a wonderful outcome. And I'm also extremely pleased for the opportunity, especially for our public health teams within the Ministry of Health, that CAFA is bringing this conference into St. Lucia. So it will give us a, a greater opportunity for our officers to be exposed to this conference being held in St. Lucia. At this point, I would like to introduce our second feature speaker, Honorable Moses Jabatis, the Minister for Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. Honorable Moses Jabatis currently represents the constituency of Beaufort North and is a fourth term parliamentarian in St. Lucia's legislature. He's the Minister for Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs and the former Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Production, Cooperatives, and Rural Development in St. Lucia. His goal is to champion St. Lucia's efforts to achieve good quality, affordable, accessible health care for all St. Lucians through an efficient universal health care coverage program. Honorable Jabatis also has the responsibility of developing programs for the newly established Elderly Affairs Department of the agency. In addition to his formal work as a teacher and school principal over the years, his experience and expertise in community mobilization, poetry, traditional cultural expression, and popular theater has helped to raise awareness of environmental preservation, traditional culture in St. Lucia, and other islands of the Caribbean. His poems have been pu published in Caribbean books of poetry in both English and Creole. Mr. Jabatis has also used his formal training in agriculture to help create awareness of sustainable food production systems and to promote the practical expansion of local agriculture in St. Lucia and in the wider Caribbean. He attended tertiary institutions in St. Lucia, the St. Lucia Teachers College, Jamaica, the College of Agriculture, and Trinidad and Tobago, the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. And he also holds a Master's of Science degree in Agricultural and Rural Development, a Bachelor of Science in Agribusiness Management, Associate Science degree in General Agriculture, and a Certificate of Education in Teacher Education. Help me to warmly welcome our Minister, Honorable Moses Shabatis. Thank you very much, CMO. I did say to Dr. <laughs> to Dr. St. John that I'm very shy, so CMO has exposed a lot there. But let me <laughs> All right, let, let, let me say good morning to all, but in a very special way. Good morning to Dr. Joy St. John, the Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, Dr. Dr. Didakas Jules online, let me, who is the, direct, the executive director of the organization of, the, of the, OIC, the, the OICS. Let me greet our permanent secretary, Ms. Jenny Daniel. Also, we have with us Dr. Michelle Francois, the national epidemiologist, Mrs. Nat Natasha lloyd Felix, who is the acting director of the Substance Abuse Secretariat. I also wish to say good morning to the other officials of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, members of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, and the Nurses Association who have joined our Seren on online, the conference planning team members, both CAFA and the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. And you heard a while ago, Events St. Lucia, Ministry of Tourism, 
and all the other members of the conference planning committee, let the conference planning team. Let me also say good morning to members of the media who, who have joined us today. It is my pleasure to express the gratitude of the Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, the government, and also the gratitude of the people of St. Lucia for the opportunity to co-host the 68th Annual Health Research Conference with the Caribbean Public Health Agency in 2024. The government of St. Lucia has hosted the conference in 1975 and also in 2009. The government is pleased to collaborate with CAFA to host the 2024 Annual Health Research Conference and related pre-events, which include meetings and training workshops. The theme for this year's 68th Annual Health Research Conference is Violence in the Caribbean, a Public Health Crisis. This theme is both timely and relevant as escalating levels of violence and crime are of serious concern both locally and for the region, as you heard from Dr. St. John. This has been addressed in the past as a developmental issue focusing on the balance between tough, tough law enforcement, social development, and crime prevention strategies. Crime affects every sector of our society, from families, communities, the tourism sector, education, health sector, and the documented economic impacts on our country. The effects on the health sector are of particular concern to me as the Minister for Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. The effects range from the increased physical injuries with loss of limb and disabilities to mental health disorders due to psychological distress, anxiety, and depression, especially in the communities most impacted. The health sector is also affected through increased costs, as you could well imagine, through treatment, hospitalization, diagnosis, and sick leave days, etc. This leads to competing resources for the management of chronic and other conditions and the health sector workforce stress that can result in burnout of health workers when managing victims of violent crimes and also witnessing traumatic events. The public health approach which is proposed will assist in the identification of the determinants, prevention strategies, and facilitate the holistic approach utilizing multiple agencies to address crime and violence. <clears throat> Excuse me. This research conference will provide great insights into research and clinical findings of significance to policymakers, allowing evidence-based decision making. The delegates will be engaged in full discussion on priority public health issues to spark insights on how problems can be addressed and generate action. This will strengthen the fostering of a research culture among local health and allied health professionals. The conference will allow capacity building in research, grant writing, and implementation science, and other research skills for health and allied health professionals. It also provides a forum to establish mentorships, partnerships, and collaborations that would strengthen the capacity of researchers in St. Lucia to attract grants and conduct and utilize research. The CAFA Health Research Conference will attract approximately 200 regional and international delegates, meeting attendees and sponsors to St. Lucia. Some of these delegates may become repeat visitors after experiencing St. Lucia's beautiful culture and of course the attractions. The conference offers special rates for nationals and so we encourage the full participation of students, teachers, and health-related professionals, also alumni on the island. I wish to encourage the members of the Medical and Dental Association, the Nurses Association, Pharmacy, Allied Health Professionals, and related disciplines to participate fully. This is an excellent opportunity for self-development. The public is invited to join us on Wednesday, 24th April, from 6 p.m. for a town hall discussion theme, Violence and the Youth. The venue is the Financial Administration Center at Point Seraphin Castries. There are sponsorship and exhibition opportunities for businesses. As a sponsor of the conference, brands will gain unparalleled exposure. So we invite one and all. 
Once again, I would like to acknowledge and thank CAFA for giving us in St. Lucia the opportunity to co-host the 68th Annual Health Research Conference in our beautiful island, St. Lucia. I would like to thank CAFA, qui an organization la Kawaii Black qui regarde santé avec bon matin nous ni Dr Joyce St John qui c'est chef Kafa avec ça il vient faire ici c'est c'est discuter qui ça qu'on fait wasta là kai kai en avril qu'on fait wasta ka garder ça fait violence en cette ici avec un Kawaii Black avec qu'on nous a dit avant ça fait violence là c'est un un bagage qui ca concerner santé et qui ca il y a chai difficulté par gens santé c'est docteur c'est nurse là um, ces police là ces gens popier qui ca qui les l'année divers actes violence qui ca venir pour aider ces monde il ca affecté économie pays a violence ca affecté secteur santé santé pays a avec aussi il ca affecté ça nous ca couyer psychological effect ça veut dire qui ça qui ca arriver l'idée monde qu'on nous avec docteur avec pompier avec police avec tout le monde qui ca aider les l'année moun ki ki jwenn afekte pa violence ko sa ko fe wa sa la ka mené a chay professionnel ki sorti a Kawaib la avec ki sorti an set lisi nos docteur avec moun ki ka fè recherche an zafè violence avec zafè santé i ka mené yo ansanm an set lisi an ro 200 participan ka vini set lisi avec pou diskite zafè violence avec kwim avec ki mané ka afekte santé ko minis santé mwen ka wi merci ka fò pour travailler avec nous avec l'année diverses lot agency contre tourism avec Vincent Saint Lucia avec Achai OIC et Achai lot agency qui a travaillé avec nous pour une bonne conférence nous gagner un chai monde saint ici avec nous commander monde qui ni business um, Jean Midia tout le monde pour venir ensemble pour aider faire conférence ça à succès moi ca merci tout Jean ministre là si un mois pièce là avec tout ces monde qui ici a avec nous Jodia pour travailler avec Mon ka di tout moun an vin ansanm pou pou nou ni a bon konferans. Mon ka remesye Dr. St. John John pou tout travay lek a fè a and I wish to say to one and all how pleased I am to be here this morning and I look forward to a conference in April. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. And as you heard, our minister highlighted the effects of crime and violence on every single sector within St. Lucia. And of course, his main concern is the effect that it is having on our health system, and in particular, our healthcare workers. We have to pay very close attention to, as we note um, those increases. He also indicated the priority in terms of looking at how we can prevent and use the public health approach to reduce what we are seeing presently on island with crime and violence. And the, the level of joy that it brings having Dr. Joyce and John here with us, <laughs> and also the opportunity to work with CAFA for the conference coming up in April. And we are really hoping that we get the full support of all, not only our healthcare workers, but all sectors, as we said, managing violence and crime requires a multi-sectoral approach. At this point, I open the floor if there are any questions that you may have for our feature presenters at this time. I will hand over to you if you have any questions that you would like to pose. Are there any questions from the audience? Or are there any questions online? Are there any questions online or from our audience? OK. So at this point, I would like to thank our feature presenters, Honorable Moses Jabatis and Dr. Joyce and John for their presence here this morning. 
the media for covering this events, and all of you who came in today from the Ministry of Health, from CAFA, from all of our stake. Excuse me, you have a question? Sorry. <laughs> come, come forward. Come forward. Um, since you mentioned, um, well, Dr. Moses mentioned that um, a lot of our nurses and firemen and other medical practitioners, they have to, on a daily, interact with patients who have serious injuries and the traumatic experiences which are impacted on them and them having to go now to their families. Um, what measures will be put in place um, in long term or short term where they can get debriefing probably before entering work or leaving work or even having psychiatrists available for them so that now they'll be more sensitized and more, I would say, prepared to deal with these experiences without now going home to their family and having to release that stress which may not be so positive for children, especially. Um, I'm, I am a child of a fireman, and uh, my dad has been in the service for about 30 years, and sometimes it takes away your human aspect or your empathy when you see these things on a recurring basis. So what mm -hmm. measures will be placed providing psychiatric um, assistance for these personnel, firemen, nurses, and doctors who interact with the extreme cases? Would you like me to answer? I'll let you start and then okay. I'll I suspected you want a St. Lucian answer, but I'm going to give you a regional answer. So first of all, I want to thank you for that question. That was an excellent question, and it shows some insight into this whole issue of the complexity of mental health in our communities. And I think one of the best examples of a specific uh, program designed for the mental health of the health staff is something called Stress in the Workplace, which was a program specifically designed with the help of the Pan American health organization for addressing just that. The, the mental health, the debriefing of staff in a crisis, for example, post hurricane, or even day to day, as you said, in dealing with situations which are pretty extreme and gross. And there was a specific way of debriefing not just um, the nurses and the doctors, but the administrative professionals who have to support. One of the things that we're hoping will come out of this conference is a discussion of these fine-tuned um, responses. And during the conference, we're planning to have a special panel discussion involving persons from the region and outside of the region to discuss what are some of the programs that are in place in this region and internationally which address not just the health professionals but the the effects on the entire community so thanks for that question i am hoping that dr belmar george can give you some st lucian perspectives but those are the regional and international perspectives so yes there's been a recognition but the, the money to implement this region-wide is something that we hope will come out of the conference. Over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. St. John, for that. On a local level, it is one of the areas which we note is of increasing um, concern. Um, we see it quite a bit with our nurses, our staff from the emergency room, and we know that our EMTs and the fire service workers are also affected. So the importance of debriefing, especially after managing a, a situation involving violent crime, and this is one of the things we have to ensure is done regularly. The Ministry of the Public Service also has an employee um, assistance. assistance program which is currently running to provide support in times like this. 
we know it's one of the areas that we need to strengthen. And as a part of the COFA conference, one of the areas that we know um, from a preventative point of view is looking at the family members of persons who were directly involved or victims of, of violence. For example, the children of someone who may have been killed, the, the rest of the extended family, and ensuring that we have social services to be able to manage. I think this is one of the gaps that we have within our system. So one of the discussions that we will be having on the 24th of April is violence on the youth. So we'll be looking at the young persons within the communities, the children of persons who may be affected by violence and crime, the education sector, what we are seeing within the schools. So we are really hoping that the discussions that come out of that forum would come out in the way of some of the recommendations. And we really want to take an approach where we don't speak down, we don't make recommendations for the young people, but we want to hear the voices of the young persons indicating their issues, indicating how they are affected, and also getting the recommendations directly for them. We think that will be most effective ensuring that they are involved as a part of the solution. So I'm hoping that you will attend as well to put your voice because it, you, children of our healthcare workers are also affected by violence and crime. So we really look forward to that where we'll get the voice of the youth in the effects of, of violence and crime on island. Any other questions? Yes, just stand up. The mic, please. Please state your name and designation. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Shirley Duncan, president of the Solution Misses Association. And I'd like to say that I'm very happy to be here this morning at this event. I could see that we are very excited about this conference. Um, first of all, I want to say that this conference is very timely because as we know as a country, we have recently experienced an increase in crime and violence in our communities. And some of our facilities are actually located in those high risk areas. And of recent, we had a few um, cases where we actually had some of the violence almost kind of reaching one of our facilities in the south. And so we wanted to know as an association in our role as advocates for our, our members with regard to their working conditions, we would like to know if it is possible that the government of St. Lucia or corporate citizens are willing to support some of our nurses to attend this grand conference because as we know, they are the ones who are first in line to take care of those patients, to be able to provide support to the families who are hurting, to do home visiting in those very communities where the crime has increased. So we would like to know what is the plan for the government of St. Lucia with regards to supporting staff to attend this conference. Okay, this is one of the areas which we are in discussion on. The Ministry of Health will be supporting um, various, um, er, various sectors, departments within the ministry to ensure that our officers get some exposure to the research agenda. I don't know if Minister, if you want to give any remarks on it. As well. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Nurse Duncan, for your intervention. And let me say, I'm very pleased that the Nurses Association is represented here. I want to join uh, the CMO, Dr. Sharon Belma-George. But I want to add the, the, the policy perspective. While the ministry will ensure that the officers from the various departments, that, that the various departments are represented, I want to assure the nurses and um, the medical professionals that the government is very serious about um, rolling out a program which will ensure a measure of security and increased um, security at in, a measure of increased security at the various facilities. Over the last few months, um, it is public knowledge that some of the facilities were impacted by some of the, the, the violent incidents which we had, especially over the last few months. And um, I can tell you in discussions with the Prime Minister, um, he assured me that 
we will be, over the next few months, looking at um, increased security. And we have been having discussions at the level of the ministry, especially with the permanent secretary, to see what, what may be possible with, with the rollout in a phased way of, of security cameras, um, at least as a first step, and to increase the level of security. In some cases, we have to consider additional armed security, and in some cases, introduce armed security. And I am saying so publicly because it is a discussion which we are having at the level of the, the, the Minister of the Minister for Finance and, and the Prime Minister. So we are very concerned as a government that our healthcare workers um, are in this ambit of, of the increase. The, the, it is possible that, that, that they are in areas where um, increased violence may, may reach them inadvertently or, or as a result of individuals seeking shelter at the, at the wellness centers. Some people believe that this is probably the, the secure place to be and therefore, you know, they, they, they would go there. Just this morning, I just going through the news in the Caribbean, I looked at what happened in, in St. Vincent. Um, I'm sure some of you may have read, you know, that there was an incident. Someone who went to, the, to, to one of the facilities for medical treatment um, received, what was at the receiving end of, of, of more violence, um, even at the medical facility. And it is not uncommon in the Caribbean um, for people to feel threatened in, in their workplace, in the health centers, in the hospitals. It's, some of it, you know, have, some of it has happened here. So we are cognizant of it, and I think it's important for everybody, the, the, the government officials in particular, to, 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 to look at this situation um, square in the face and to ensure that we do our best. So discussions are ongoing, and we will be in touch with the association um, very soon. All right, thanks. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. I now invite Dr. St. John to also respond. So from the regional perspective, this is information which is very hot off the press. Only this morning we got the word from CARFA's Research Ethics Committee that they have okayed some research that we are going to be undertaking um, this is all part of the Pathway to Policy project where we have partnership with CARICOM Impacts, the University of the West Indies, George Allen Chronic Disease Research Center, CARFA. Um, we are doing this also with the Small Arms Survey, an organization based in Geneva. And we are going to be actually doing research with healthcare workers about some of the issues that they're seeing coming into their hospitals. So we're looking at it from two perspectives. What are the kinds of injuries that are coming in and also the impacts on the actual healthcare workers. So we will be doing that research as part of the Pathway to Policy Project. So we will have Caribbean data about some of the impacts that we can actually then go on to, to propose um, policy to policy makers so that we can have some way of addressing what is actually happening in the healthcare centers. Over. Thank you very much, um, Dr. St. John, for that. And this is another example of using research and evidence-based data to guide the policies for the region, not only for St. Lucia, but also for the region who's experiencing similar issues. There are some questions online. Um, can I get the questions that are being placed online so that we can address them, please? online 
Okay, the persons who are online with the questions, please raise your hand and then we will allow you to pose your questions to our presenters. Mm -hmm. There's a question while we wait for the online persons. There's another question in the room, so please go ahead. All right, morning again. Uh, my name is Manasa Stanislas from DBS Television. Um, the other question I'd want to pose since April is celebrated as a youth month, um, what measures or what programs are put in place where youth, for example, the <coughs> student bodies from the student bodies will be allowed to? into the forum and gather information so that they can also impact that on their peers at school, knowing that um, we have peer helpers and other organizations that um, will be shaping the youth and since youth are heavily affected by crime so that they can more or less educate them on how to be more cognizant of how crime affects um, various aspects of daily living and also as an SBA component for social studies, um, would that be something considered by the ministry so that case studies can be um, driven and also since you are looking into having research platforms and research teams would that also be considered so that the students can gather that information and put it to practical use and understand that it relates to them on a the daily basis thank you very much for that question we have invited the national youth council the ministry of education and the tertiary level educators to the the youth the town hall meeting discussion, violence and the youth, so that we can get the voice from all of the students as well. We have also shared the information on the CAFA conference to all of the various ministries and organizations to ensure participation from as wide a stakeholder group as possible. I note it is, you said it is the, the youth month, so we will reach out a little bit more even to the youth agency to ensure we have the full participation of the youth at the conference. I think this is a very good recommendation coming from you to ensure we have that level of representation as you are a very important stakeholder when we, we manage crime and violence. Thank you for that. Um, can I get some of the questions from the... The crisis of the family okay. in the Caribbean. Will the 68th meeting also address the crisis of the family in the Caribbean? Might the root of the crime crisis, such as child abuse in the households? The I'll read that again. Yeah. Will the 68th meeting also address the crisis of the family in the Caribbean? Maybe child abuse in the households. So we are working on the agenda for the, um, the actual scientific papers which were delivered. I am not sure if we have a scientific paper which deals with um, abuse in the family. I, I can't remember that. But in the, in the um, panel discussion that I spoke to you about, we had wanted to get as wide a perspective as possible. So perhaps what we can do is to get the moderator to bring out some of those family elements uh, from, from the perspective of violence in the family so we can get some discussion there. Can I get another question from the online viewers, please? That's it? Okay. Are there any other questions from the audience? Okay. I think given we had a few questions, I think I would like to get some closing remarks from Dr. St. John and also from the minister at this point. Just some closing remarks from you before we end. So I have now done um, three launches in country uh, 
for the CARFA conference. And I have to tell you that this is the best set of questions that I've ever had in the launches. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Minister and CMO, for getting that level of interest and involvement. So even at the launch, we know that St. Lucia is on track. I really enjoyed this experience. I'm just here for a few hours, but it was such a nice introduction to the loveliness of St. Lucia to have intellectual food for thought. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. St. John. Minister, I invite you for a few closing remarks. I want to thank Dr. Joyce St. John for joining us today. I'm told that her visit to St. Lucia today is very brief. And so I'm hoping that when she returns for the conference, she'll spend a lot more time, Dr. Yes, St. John? For a whole. For, oh, very good. So uh, let, me, <clears throat> let me say thank you to, to her and her husband for joining us. And also um, thanks to Dr., Dr. our CMO for you know, organizing the, 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 the chairing of this session. Let me thank all those of you who have joined us. And let me say to the, to the audience online and also those who will view this press conference after today to, to join us. I am sure in April there will be um, online discussions. And I'm sure our professionals are looking forward to this. So thanks, everyone. Thanks to the professionals from the ministry, the permanent secretary, and the whole team, and um, the other partners who will join us, the associations, nurses, the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, and everyone else. I invite you to join. I want to thank everyone who is here avec moi quand vous tout le monde pour ces questions avec nous qu'à garder pour une bon café was à la vie thanks very much thank you so i once again i thank our feature presenters honorable moses jabatis and dr saint john for your presence here this morning the media for covering this event and for all of you the planning committee the ps our team from the ministry of health I also think it necessary to thank the Cabinet of Ministers for agreeing to co for St. Lucia to be a co-host of this event as well. I also want to take the last opportunity today to invite all of you, in particular our health-related practitioners, physicians, dentists, nurses, pharmacists, lab technicians, our EMTs, health educators, environmental health officers, nutritionists, students, our youth groups, everybody to participate in our town hall discussion on violence and the youth, which will be held on Wednesday, the 24th of April at 6 p.m. at the Financial Administrative Center at Point Seraphine, and the 68th Annual Health Research Conference themed Violence in the Caribbean, a public health crisis from Thursday, April 27th to the 20, 25th to the 27th at the Royalton Hotel in Grosely. Thank you and good still morning and good morning. Thank you. Thank you.